is the daydreamer. But you know I find. the beginning of the game, whenever we were stretching, I told them they better work hard and get in place. The crew! Who we want next week? The crew! Who we want next week? The crew! And then I saw the reverse and then I tackled them. Great job to the other team. All right, sportsmanship the word, man. Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Yes, Who's out? Who's out? Who out? Who out? I can't do anything without my line. None of us can. The line makes the team. We want this move! <laughs> the quarterback gonna walk off on it. They said they want the smoke. We'll see you guys next time on Semi Pro Live. Hi, this is Channing Humphrey with Semi-Pro Live. I'm here with another edition of our weekly show. We're going to kick it a little bit away from the coaches and bring you up uh, some player profiles. Well, my first guest of the day is going to be B.J. Parker of the South, excuse me, of the South Side Ducks out of the Houston area. Now, uh, this young man has a lot of accolades, a lot of awards. He's going to be joined today by his parents. He's going to have Billy and Kelsey, his mom and dad. Now, just a little bit of background, just so you know, this is an athletic family. Uh, Billy Parker is a former Division I uh, All-American linebacker uh, out of Texas Southern, and his mother is no slouch herself, a former All-State track sprinter. So, we got some all athletes on here today. We're going to fade away from the coaches a little bit. So I just want to give you guys a chance to introduce yourself and say hello to our audience. So uh, I'll let you guys take it away. All right. Well, who are you? I am William. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, it's six-year-old interviews. It's your show, man. <laughs> so how you doing, BJ? Man, I haven't uh, gotten a chance to talk to you since uh, you were winning the baby ball. Yes. So how was that experience? We just we we just, <laughs> we, just we just lost to the crew. The baby bowl. No, baby bowl, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> man. I know these championships get confusing for you. Yes, yeah, so I first was the baby one. Well, you got this ring. Everyone. Yes. All right, yeah, guys. Hard. I just, I just, I just have fun. 
All right, man. All right. Well, let's just go over a little bit of this young man's accomplishments early in his career. So uh, I'm going to get a little info from the from Billy. So did he play flag or is this his first splash in the football altogether? No, nah, nah, he started out in flag football with the uh, Cypher Ravens. Oh, so okay. that was when he was four. And then last year during the fall 2020 season, he played – uh, first year tackle football with the 249 Steelers in Gridiron. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So this is second. Uh, this is going to be his second season ever of tackle, but uh, his first year with the South Side Ducks. So this Correct. accomplishment is even more impressive because I was going to say over his first career, but this is just over the last year. So uh, we'll just go over that list. He was CCE's 2021 uh, number one ranked five year old. Uh, he was the top prospect to play six-year-old for the 2020 CCE championship list. Uh, also, he was invited to play in the blue chip combine. He also, you guys were runner up in the Texas spring league championship. Uh, that was actually filmed by us. I got a chance to see him up close and personal, put up a great fight uh, despite the odds. Uh, he also was invited to the true talent, all American, uh, in 2021, he's invited to compete with the Mike Evans Academy, which is very impressive because that's an elite flag program out of the Houston area. So we're going to bring them up again because we do a lot. We, we love the Mike Evans Academy, and we catch them a lot playing around Texas. And uh, in 2021, oh, he was invited to the Kincaid Passing Academy as well and the 2021 Baby Bowl MVP. So your son has been able to rack up uh, quite the number of accomplishments and really within the last year. So what has gone on as far as your training regimen and his game between last year and this pretty much the spring that he's played with the Southside Ducks? Man, that's a great question. I think with BJ, uh, with his training regimen, we really just focused on – like the basic fundamentals of football. So it was me and two other guys. We really started training our kids. Um, this uh, literally like this time last year, May 2020. And we just, you know, we'll go out and just kind of work on just kind of blocking, tackling, just getting used to contact football. But we literally had to build it up like step by step. So it was like just, you know, wrapping, hitting the bag. And then you know, being able to run and tackle, but staying low. So it, it was literally a step-by-step -step progression that really took a lot of time and patience. Um, but the main thing in our training sessions that we focus on is just being mentally disciplined. So, you know, in context, we just focus on like conditioning and being able to like stay mentally focused. Um, that's like really like stage one uh, as far as the, the, the mental part. And then, like, the fundamentals, as I mentioned, blocking, tackling, footwork coordination. Um, I'll just say I was blessed, you know, to have the resources to be able to, to, to put him into some additional training, uh, such as Santel Hobbs. He's with Firefoot uh, Inc. Um, here in okay. Houston. So, um, you know, just really just establishing that discipline is really big. And I think a lot of that, man, really started, started the career before we even go on the football field. Just, uh, just as far as his upbringing. And then, you know, me and his mom coming from athletic backgrounds, a lot of that I uh, was able to translate over to, like, his character. Um, so, that, you know, those are really the main things I really kind of, you know, uh, attribute, you know, would be just as far as his mental discipline, being fundamentally sound, and, you know, just through the grace of God, he's been able to catch on to those concepts a lot quicker than some, uh, some of his peers probably his age. All right. Well, just to build off of that, uh, the training portion, I noticed when you said uh, when you began training, you started with the tackling dummy, form tackling, running people yeah. down. And I, you're you're having uh, you have an issue that you can touch on that can help a lot of coaches uh, that may be watching and a lot of uh, parents that may be watching. So you are a linebacker, primarily a defensive player. Your son plays quarterback. Yeah. So. Uh, how did you go about first acquiring the knowledge? And we've just been joined by Leroy. I'm going to ask you to mute your mic, Leroy. We'll bring you on shortly. 
but uh, we the fact that you played linebacker and right. to be training a quarterback, how does that how does that dynamic work? And how do how do you translate your skills from linebacker over to him? And yeah. how are you able to acquire the knowledge to actually train him up to a level where he can be competitive? Man, that's a great question. Uh, I've been playing football since I was like six years old, six, seven years old. So being able to play from the age of six, seven to the age of 22, um, you get an opportunity or you may get an opportunity to play multiple positions. I didn't translate to the linebacker position until my junior year in high school. So my first two years, I was starting quarterback. So I was already familiar with offense, but just given um, – what I feel like my uh, my strong asset at the time, you know, uh, defense was, was 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 probably more of a better preference. So the fact that I played the position of quarterback in middle school, um, youth football, and and as well as in my early stages in high school, and also played running back, you know, being able to play multiple positions on the offense side of the ball, um, that's how I was able for me to translate into teaching BJ like his uh, his holes. Um, okay. Being able to teach him um, his fundamentals with his footsteps. Right now, the first year we didn't even work on throwing the ball because I wanted him to have a, have a good sound um, fundamental, just like blocking, tackling, things of that nature. But we're just now getting into actually throwing the ball and him learning the route. Okay. Track. You know, so you know that's that that's basically because I played that position early on in my high school career. Um, that's kind of how you know I've been able to translate that skill set over to at least teaching BJ that. And as well, you know, uh, I didn't want to play quarterback. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I did not want to play quarterback. I argued with BJ's first offensive coordinator, uh, Coach Brandon. Uh, he was at RCU when he was five. And I'm like, bruh, why are you a quarterback? Like, and, you know, and even now, me and Jamarco is current, or at least his offensive coordinator, head coach during the spring. I'm like, bro, like, put him at tailback. Let him come down the hill, <laughs> you know. But they always talk about his IQ, how well he catches on and not make, you know, many errors. So uh, I think that go back to, like, the mental discipline uh, in that aspect. All right, all right. Well, Kelsey, I don't want to just have you over there just to looking <laughs> pretty. So we're going to bring you all here. You're a former All-State track star. So <laughs> what does your speed and your training with track, what aspect of that do you bring to his development and his training? More of like the mental part and also like his form. You know, I'm really big on like making sure he has the right form when he's running. I just come from an athletic family. Gotcha. My dad played college football. He's a high school football coach currently and has been coached for 40 plus years. So okay. all I know is football. I was on the sideline with my dad, me and my sister during the game. So football has always been my first love. But they, as I grew up, I just naturally had the speed. Um, so when training him, I'm telling Bill, like, hey, no, he needs to go cheek to cheek. We got to do this. We got to do that. <laughs> um, and he and BJ, he thinks it's a game still. Like, he's still such a kid at heart. And um, so that's how I feel like I play that aspect. And I'm a competitor. Like, All right. Well, well, to even build off of that, so – you come from a different uh, standpoint and aspect with you coming from a football family. So you see, you've seen both sides of the game. So from your competitive standpoint, being a former competitor and just knowing that you come from a football family with your father being a high school coach, where, how do you balance that line between mom and forcing your son to be a competitor? <laughs> Actually, I feel like I'm two of a mom sometimes because I'm like, no, I don't want him to, you know, continue to hit like that. Like, Billy, you, come on, like, we've been practicing long enough. Um, but I know, like, I started young. So my dad had me in sports at a young age and just making sure I was disciplined in school on the basketball because I play basketball, too. So I think just, I mean, he's my only son. So I still, he's like mama's boy. I, I can find the balance at times. I think my husband sometimes probably tells me I'm too like, okay, Kelsey, like, chill out. You know, we, we're doing this right now. I'm like, okay, well, stop, stop yelling at him so much. 
Um, but there's, there's definitely a balance. All right, DJ. So, man, you, you've gotten a lot of football under your belt, man. What's your favorite part of playing the game? Um, the, the, the championship. Championships? <laughs> mm -hmm. He liked the rings. <laughs> he liked the rings. Like the rings. Right, yes. So what do you like about the championship games? You just like the outcomes, the awards, or you like just the crowd, the celebration, the big time? Just <laughs> what do you like about the championship games? About um, we 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 got to win. So yeah, what do you like about the championship games? He like winning. <laughs> I'm hitting. Okay, okay. I see you trying to get recorded early. He like winning, he like hitting. It's time to recruit. All right, Shut man. Down. Well, as you said, you guys are an athletic family. So uh, I, as we were talking before the show started, you told us about some of the accolades of your, your other kids, your daughters. So I just now realized I'm going to have to schedule another yeah. show and have her on with you guys. So tell me about the other <laughs> athletes in the family. So our daughter, Elizabeth Parker, she's 14. Um, she uh, just recently won districts in the 300 meter hurdle, as well as finished runner up in the four by four. Um, this was really her first year running track, but we started the track training process with the running Ravens, which is the AU program in Northwest Houston uh, during COVID. So uh, last year we didn't get a chance to compete due to the pandemic, but um, she really surprised us this year uh, in, in, in the track. And Kelsey can speak more to that realm, but uh, one of the things that we really are big on with our with our children is to give them effort, you know, because that's one of the things you can control. And uh, seeing her, you know, be able to be champion uh, for the first time doing a 300-meter hurdle, which is a, a grueling, <laughs> yeah, it's very grueling. And, uh, you know, we were really proud of that. So, uh, you know, she's active in track, she's active in volleyball. Uh, and like I said, we were just surprised because Liz is more of an academic student. So seeing her uh, compete and actually, you know, really put forth the effort and the training with her mom, uh, man, that was just really inspiring to see because, in my opinion, sports really translate over to life. Rather, you know, working in a teamwork environment, pushing against adversity and all those different aspects. So uh, with Liz, man, you know, that was just really exciting, I'll say. All right, all right. Well, man, athletes abundant over here. Well, just to build off of that, so you are you deal with uh, some, some different aspects of the game. My son's a lineman, so at the end of the day, he's six. If he miss a block, I'll be like, hey, bro, he was six. <laughs> but, you know, luckily for me, he's a giant six-year-old, so I don't have to worry about that. Now, your son plays quarterback, and, and with playing quarterback comes a lot of responsibility, no yeah. matter the level. So how have you guys as a family, including DJ, just been handling the pressure? Man, I will say, um, you know, if I'm being honest, my first year in playing tackle, I would say I probably struggled a lot with balancing, knowing his capabilities and when he would fall short. From an accountability perspective, I would probably say I was a bit zealous initially. Um, this year, I would say this spring, I've been able to really scale back from that aspect. But as far as balancing the pressure, uh, I think because of you know the, the standards we hold them to at home, making your bed up, uh, cleaning your room, uh, going and you know try to pick out your clothes. We really push those independence big. And, you know, at times, you know, I can hold them accountable as well to that. So um, I think, you know, a lot of those things kind of translate over to when we're on the football field uh, because we push them for independence and, you know, we challenge them mentally, even with his, even with his schoolwork. Um, you know, when he don't want to work on his letters with his mom, she's very persistent. I'm like, son, you ain't going to meet another woman more persistent than your mom. Like, you know what I'm doing? She'll give you a break, but you're going to do them words. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I just think, like, man, the upbringing, man, just not only with Beach, but I just feel with kids in general, it, it really translates over to the field. Like, sometimes 
when a kid is kind of locked in or paying attention, even though they're five and six, just that home discipline, I think, uh, helps him deal with the pressure and, and, and really helps him to really lock in and help his team uh, at the at the quarterback position. Okay, okay. Well, all right, guys. So we're going to take a short break. We're going to show you what all the hype is about, the reason this man had to get the interview. We're going to show you – uh, one of his highlight videos and a little bit of his training regimen, and we'll be right back the second half of the interview. And before I go, bam, bam, I see you in the comments. We know you're watching. Go ahead and uh, try and patch in that link again, and we hopefully will have you for the second half of the show after we get back from this break. So we're going to finish up the interview when we get done with the break. But until then, enjoy these highlights courtesy of BJ Parker. We'll be right back on Semi Pro Live. All right, folks, we are back after that break. And those were definitely some exciting hap I mean, some ex exciting highlights. One of the, some of the best footwork that I've seen on the 6 U level. <laughs> so, man, now that we've uh, touched on football a little bit, let's come back and talk about uh, BJ as a kid, man. So, BJ, I want to just find out, man, what are you interested in outside of football? So, BJ, what are some of the things you're interested in outside of football? Oh, here. So, uh, what do you like doing? Playing dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So, uh, what got you interested in dinosaurs? And what's your favorite dinosaur? It's a T-Rex. A T-Rex? Okay, okay. So, what got you interested in that? Who got you your first dinosaurs? 
um, um, my, 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 my mama. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So what do you like about the dinosaurs? To, to fight with the velociraptor. The velociraptor. Wait, what, what the velociraptor. So like, I was, I was, me and uh, his aunt are huge fans of like Jurassic Park. Okay. So we've been taking him to go to like Jurassic World since he was young. And so I, I like dinosaurs. So I think just watching Jurassic Park every single day, it, he's really gotten into dinosaurs and cars and yeah, he looked like we have a million dinosaurs at this house. <laughs> Wait, well, he might be a future uh, geologist. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> Football no, with a major in geology. <laughs> it's off seasons. Right. He's out in Alaska digging up bones. You never know, man. You keep all your doors open. So, right. all right, right. Then, so uh, you now part of the reason why I reached out to you for the interview was well, actually, we'll save that question for later. It was a good one. I'm gonna come back to it anyway. Uh, just to uh, keep building on that. So, tell us more about his education. So, what's he like in the classroom? Man, that's a good question. I mean. Uh... I was say because kindergarten, I'm transitioning from pre-K to kindergarten. I think to be honest and transparent, I think the first semester was was a bit challenge mm -hmm. because BJ has a speech delay. Uh, he was born with a speech delay, so sometimes when he's expressing himself, um, it takes him a little time to gather his words, and then. Um, so, you know, that was one thing that me and mom was worried about when he started school, if he was going to be able to articulate himself at his age level compared to some of his peers. Um, but, you know, again, just through the grace of God, just seeing the resources that we've been able to to get him to help with that, we've seen a lot of dramatic improvement with his speech. And um, I think that's reflective to his understanding, him being able to translate his words, as oh, well wow. as him being able to work through other other subject areas as well. So uh, you want to add to that, Carol? Yeah, I mean, when he started, me being in the field that I am, I'm like, when he was small, like Bill, I think there might be some type of delays going on. And so we got him tested, did all the tests. And of course, he had a speech delay. So he started speech therapy. Um, and even like the comprehension, like just wasn't where I feel like it needed to be. But I feel like football definitely helped yeah. him express himself a lot more because being around other peers, I was a little nervous. I was like, oh, gosh, I hope he doesn't get bullied because sometimes the way he speaks, he, they're not going to understand, like, what he's saying. So then we call like, him a baby and all these things. <laughs> but seeing him just really, you know, take that challenge and really, you know, gain all the – the aspects that he has with that, you know, with my husband training him, I was shocked. And it football has really helped him in the classroom because it's been able to help him communicate with his peers, actually be a, more attentive. So that translates into the schoolwork from now, from like what the beginning of school to now, his teacher was like, man, I've seen like a huge change in like for his reading, his articulation. Okay. Um, so really just staying on, because I'm, I'm, I'm big on academics, really staying on top of, because he, he needs that extra push. He, he needs extra work. It takes him a little extra to get things. Like, he doesn't just get it academically, you know, right then and there. Football, you show him, like, two plays, he got it after once. He gets it. And that's why I was worried about him being a quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was going to be my next first. question. Now, I used to argue with Coach Brandon, uh, Coach Jamarco. Like, because if I'm being honest and transparent, I didn't, because of that point, I didn't think mentally yeah. that he can really execute. And then, you know, I think it goes back to, you know, because we don't make, like, we eliminate every excuse in raising our kids. Even my younger brother who has autism, we push them to be very independent uh, because, you know, we live in a black culture and a black society. And uh, I know what he's going to face, you know, once he gets into the world as a young black man. So, you know, I think that the biggest part of that, um, you know, the educational part, as Kelsey mentioned, and even with football, I mean, he, like, like, even I watch his videos like an hour ago, I'd be amazed at how well he's able to compete in his football IQ, that it took other coaches to, to show me that. 
Okay. Um, and that's I, I think that was the assignment part. All right. Well, let's just build on that point. Um, so what part of football, do you, how do you feel that, what, let me just organize my thoughts. How do you feel that football has uh, drawn out or helped him in the classroom as far as his speech impediment? And how does he overcome those, uh, maybe those dis, this, those disadvantages from the impediment as he's a quarterback? He's one of the players who has to be vocal on, on the field. Yeah. I think that, um, man, one of the things is playing with some older kids. Like, BJ okay. at five played up on seven U in his first tackle game. So being okay. around other kids that's a little more mature mentally, I think helped out a lot as far as that's been in that circle of peer. I think that's been, you know, one of the, the things that helped out. And um, I just think because, you know, like the game really comes very simple to him. So he picks up very fast. So uh, I just think, you know, again, just being around like older, a little older kids, training with older kids, as well as, uh, you know, the things we work with them at home. We definitely see how that translates over to football. Okay, okay. Now, uh, before I get over to the comments, man, I I'm seeing a reoccurring theme. The Southside Ducks, man, I want you to just talk a little bit more about that organization. I, I know you put in a lot of work on the parent end, but yeah. I mean, if I'm an outsider, yeah. I see the rise of BJ kind of coincide with the rise of the Southside Ducks 6 U organization. What's it like being a, a part of that organization and, and how do they compare it to some of the organizations you've been a part of in the past? Oh man, that's a great question. Uh, you want to answer that first? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, so, so, you know, I, I knew, Coming from the spring, we, we, you know, this was the first year I said we were going to let them do like all year football uh, because we wanted them to have a real strong foundation, being a little bit on the older side this year on 6U. And, um, you know, we were in between like three organizations coming into the spring. Um, and then we also wanted, you know, to see him compete and play on the national stage. So other organizations we were considering – Southside Ducks was, I think, was a better fit because they are successful from bottom to top. Um, I think last year, 2022 season, they went 44 and four as an entire organization. They sent two levels uh, to nationals: uh, the 11 U and their 12 U. And um, you know, to me, that to me, that's impressive because what's important to me is when considering um, an organization, I don't want to move around. You know, one of the things, you know, before BJ was playing, I coached about four or five years in youth football before he started playing. And we were always with, you know, the Cypher and Ravens. So, uh, and you know, uh, I think that with the Ducks, one thing that you will see is that they have some very talented, experienced kids. Their staff all have played the game. And some are, and a lot of them are still playing and semi-pro. So Shout out to Andrew to Turner. Like, yeah, they be <laughs> like, man, you want to practice. I'm like, what? Like, you just got that coach and you want to practice? So, you Shout know. Shout out to so the Red Raiders. Is that, exactly, <laughs> Red Raiders, yeah. <laughs> so, and then the other part that I'm learning, because I'm still new with the Southside Ducks, is that they do have a real true family atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I got a chance to just really, you know, connect with them outside of youth football. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, like the, the, the coaching, it's solid, um, you know, the retention of their staff, like that, it is a family rent organization and you can see that. So, uh, you know, when people talk about the Southside Ducks, that is a brand that is known like in the nation. Even my friends back home, you know, us being from Ohio, you know about, you, you may know about Glenville Elite, where Ted Ginn came out of uh, uh, Cleveland. Most definitely. So that was one of the teams that actually defeated Southside the 12 U in the uh, in a in a um, in nationals that uh, AYF and uh, but they all talk. I'm, I'm about, more of a Kim Moore Cardinal type of guy. It, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> so now Southside Ducks is, a, in my opinion, uh, I believe the Southside Ducks is one of the best brand organizations in the nation. When you're looking at it from bottom to top, you look at their success and as well as their sustainability. Uh, the organization has been around, I believe, since 2014-15, and the, the president of the organization 
you know, he's young. I mean, he just turned 30. And uh, one of the things that inspired me is when he started the org, they only had a few kids. Um, and seeing what it's grown into now, you know, to me, I think is, um, you know, a lot of the things are why we considered, well, why we chose uh, Southside Ducks coming into the spring and, you know, even consideration even going forward. Um, and then, of course, BJ, he loves the Southside Ducks. And I think yes. that's a lot. Like, they, they, they do a lot for the kids. Yeah. Um, one of the things they did not to drag this on, what I thought was cool was they rented out the theater, had a movie night, and gave them their jerseys. And that was just on spring. So they really do a lot for all the levels. And they and they promote all their levels, not just one level, but all the levels. If you look at the Texas Power Ranking, out of, out of the eight levels, they're ranked in the top ten and five of those eight levels. So I just think it speaks to to their performance, their brand, as well as what they do for the, the kids and then the coaching staff actually have played the game and being able to uh, teach the application and correlate that game over to the kids. And that, that's something that I find a lot of good coaches have that in common. Shout out to uh, one, my brother up here in the DFW, uh, Lenny Williams of the Pack yeah. Prime. He plays on the North Texas Stampede. They're actually rivals on the semi pro <laughs> game. Hey, you might want to catch that game when the Stampede come on down to Houston a little bit later on this year. But yeah. uh, outside of that, man, um, we're going to go ahead and take some comments before we, we go ahead and get to the wrap-up portion. So – Let's scroll on down here. We got uh, we got DT. Some us, okay, nephew. Go ahead, throw up here, show us some love. We got Renee Torres. Shout out to Dad and BJ from the Northside Oilers. Yeah. We got Brooke Clark. Bryce says hi. <laughs> Bryce said, "What's up? Hey, I know it's getting late, man. We all just get you out." <laughs> Now, shout out to DT, man. Right. DT is the uh, six U head coach for uh, Jag United. Um, oh, hey, DT, yeah. hit me up in the inbox, man. I would definitely love to have you on my show sometime yeah. next week. So we got to link up, man. Yeah, uh, but shout out to DT, man. He got a son that's going to be a problem in Texas sport, Baby D. Uh, you may have heard that name in baseball and, and, <laughs> and the championship. So now shout out to uh, DT and Bryce. As a seven-year running back, in my opinion, he was the best six-year running back last year in Gridiron. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's definitely going to be a problem this upcoming season. Uh, and then shout out to Coach Renee. He do a lot for that organization with the Northside Oilers, definitely. That's what's up. Uh, we got Bianca Hamilton doing great work with BJ. Keep it up. Let's see who else we got jumped on here. And... Oh, yeah, RCU. Shout out to RCU. Yep. Yeah. And we got... Uh, Shermaine Lee yeah. says, what's up from RC? What's up? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, man, I see you over there fading. It's been a long day. <laughs> hey, you guys out of school down there yet? You out of school yet? No. <laughs> oh, man, that's sad, man. I got my six-year-old. He in the room. He's been on the game 24-7. He doesn't know. That I've been at five and below buying up all their fitness things and training camp starts tomorrow morning. Oh, there it is. <laughs> to stay up all day. <laughs> I like to surprise my kids. When my oldest son first played tackle, I didn't even tell him he was on the team. I just showed him with some pads the day of the scrimmage. Like, it's time to go. You've been sleep all son, summer. <laughs> you been sleep all summer, son. It's time to go. But uh before we go ahead and wrap this up, man, uh First, man, uh, I always like to shine some light on any black business owner I get the pleasure of coming across. So, uh, man, tell us about what you do for a living. Are you quite the uh, financial advisor? Uh, what field are you in? Nah, so my background, I'm a CPA. Um, uh, I've been in public accounting now for the last 10 years. I just recently uh, rebranded my firm. I have not went mainstream yet, but I do have some significant multi-million dollar clients that I've been blessed to obtain. And uh, basically, the firm is Parking Associates, CPA, Business Advisors. And what we do is we do, like, financial draftings, footnote disclosures for black uh, – we target, and I say this intentionally, black-owned businesses, um, because a lot of our black-owned businesses struggle with some of the compliance. And uh, in context, a lot of – when it comes to capital resources, as far as obtaining loans for financial institutions, um, ensuring that they uh, take advantage of all tax compliances, tax write-off, 
um, and even being able to set budgets to uh, operate efficiently. And one of the things I noticed when I uh, decided to go into business with myself is that there was just some 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 very fundamental accounting um, and tax and finance concepts that you know people that like me and you were not really been able to implement. So um, that that that's my background. Uh, that that's what I believe I've been called to do to to, to, to service uh, the black community in that capacity. Uh, and so far, I mean, it's definitely been a blessing. Um, so definitely. Well, I might have to link on you uh, on that point. To be honest, I'm a black business owner myself. Oh, so there it is. <laughs> before we get done, I'm gonna also get that information from you so we can link your website at the bottom of this broadcast. That way, if anybody wants to get in contact with you, do business with you, you'll have that opportunity. And before we go, man, I just want to let DJ wake up real quick, big dog. No. <laughs> <laughs> he almost made it though. Hey, that's that discipline. You be in bed by 8.30. 8.30 bed. So Kelsey, I don't, I don't want to leave before I let you get a final word. What do you want to add to this before we go? Oh, no, I'm just, I'm just proud of BJ and all that he's accomplished and all the roadblocks that's been put before him. But like my husband said, like, we're just so blessed to have resources and family and support from everybody um so i'm just happy to see like where he's gonna go from here and and here and in the classroom so I'm proud of him all right so well bj the last word to be on you you know i don't know if you remember we end our show with the same thing we let we always let the athlete get a last word since you're the only one that's no shy kid in the back to pick so BJ, next time somebody sees you on the football field and you're about to go head to head with your opponent, what do they need to know about you? BIA. Hey, oh, oh, hold on. We almost <laughs> lost it. Man, yeah. what does that stand for? Is that a hashtag or something? What you got there? What what do BIA stand for? For for Best in America. Best in America. Best in America. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, well, hey man, hashtag B. One more time, BIA, Best in America. BIA. BIA, correction, Best in America. I got it right, right? BIA, oh, man, you said it with so much firmness, I thought I had messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to definitely hashtag that on this broadcast as well. And anytime you see that hashtag, that's going to be associated with your boy, uh, BJ. So he's been putting on some impressive highlights. He's definitely doing some big things at a young age, and he's definitely one of the players to watch out of the Houston area. I want to thank the, my guests. I want to thank Kelsey. I want to thank Billy. And I want to thank BJ for staying up so late. Yeah. And, man, I wish you the best of luck with this up and coming spring season. And we'll Fall see season. you guys. In, oh, Fall excuse me. Fall season. Fall season. Fall. Fall. Maybe that's getting late for me, too. But we'll see you guys next time on Semi Pro Live. We'll end with some highlights for you, boy, DJ. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs>